All right, we're live. So this is my very, very special guest, Laura Miller. Hi. Uh, so Laura, uh, what, 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 what are your types? In OPS, my type is MF, um, S-I-T-E, blast, play, sleep, consume. I'm guessing my social type is three, but that's not official. Um, in EU, Enneagram Universe, um, I just got retyped there. So my my new type is self-pres social, and then type six, and then my tri type is six two nine with a one seven overlay. And my original Enneagram Universe typing was social sexual. Um, what the fuck? Type five. Yep. <laughs> and then try type was five two nine with a one three six overlay, and um, I kind of got retyped because I just, especially because of the instinct. I really thought that the instinct was off, and so did a lot of other people. I did not see myself as self pres last, and as it turns out, I now have self pres first. Yeah, I mean it's really interesting because they typed you social sexual, which is. I mean, with self press blinds, and you're actually self press dom. So it is quite, you know, how did that happen? But uh, so mm -hmm. we're going to dive into that, see if there's anything that can kind of blur how things look and make it possible to mistype like that. Um, so, first of all, uh, how did you get into OPS? Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I kind of stumbled upon it by accident. So I, belong to um, multiple Facebook groups that discussed typology. And, and then there was like a link that appeared like showing other groups I may be interested in based on the groups that I was already in. And then one of the groups said objective personality. And, and I was attracted to that group because I thought this will be a group that um, talks about personality type in hopefully a, a more objective manner, unlike some of the other groups that get way too much into subjective stereotypes. So that's what I thought I was getting into. And then when I joined the group, I realized this is a whole new system. They have this own jargon. They got blast, play, and masculine, feminine. And I'm like, what is all this stuff? And then, luckily, the people there were really helpful. They they guide they guide me through it. They um, showed me Dave Superpower's channel, and I'm like, this is really interesting. And I and I then I joined the class, and 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 the rest is history. And hmm. yeah, I discovered it in um, October 2018. Hmm. Wow, that's a long time ago. That was it is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You were in the very beginning. I don't know when they started exactly. I just know it was in 2018. Not the very beginning. I think I think it was like I want to say maybe early 2019 or no, early 2018 is when it is when it started. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm you know definitely more towards the beginning end of it. I got typed in March 2019, so it's been over four years already. So when you were getting typed in OPS, um, what was your thought process? Because some people, they wait like two years or, or more before they get typed. Yeah. Um, it, like, it, did you just want to just find out or how did that, how, what made you do it? Well, I, I just wanted to find out. And, you know, <laughs> you know, like when I discover a typology, it, it, it's like, yeah, I want to know my type as soon as possible. I, I was like that with, with any grammar as well. And sometimes before I even fully understand everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I guess in OPS, I, I actually thought at first that I was an IP and I was kind of looking into oh, INTP or, or INFP. It kind of matched my self-perception at the time because I thought – um, I'm very sensitive to um, judgments from the outside. So I thought I'm a single decider. And then I related to the human need of significance. So, so I thought it was an IP. And then 
I thought it was more intuitive than sensing at the time because you, you know how bad the sensing stereotypes are in the, in the typology community and and then on tests, you know, I usually scored as an intuitive. So um, I posted a video to the group and I mean, most of them were seeing um, S-I-T-E-I-S-T-J. And then when they pointed it out to me, I rewatched the video and I'm like, oh my God, they're right. <laughs> and then I couldn't unsee it. And then, and then I got officially typed. Um, and then Dave and Shannon were seeing that as well. So, mm, I see. Wow. Okay. So um, that that's quite a. You went through a lot of different self types, and then when you finally saw your OPS type, it fit very well, right? Yeah. Um, now, when I got my OPS type back, probably the biggest surprise was um, my animal stacking. I really thought I had um, sleep above play. Because I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm an introvert and, and I'm always processing inside my head and, and, you know, socially, I'm, um, I'm just kind of doing things on my own and, and then, and then to my surprise, I came out as, as play above sleep, but then I realized like how much I'm going to the tribe for information and kind of kind of pinning off the tribe and mm. and I realized that some things were never fully resolved like sometimes I'm just kind of resolving things as I'm talking about them so I see it now but but I but it, but, it, but that one took a took a little lo longer for me to really process Okay, so how about uh, the consume last? Uh, how were you able to see the consume last? Um, that wasn't that easy to see right away either. Um, I mean, I could see that. I, I could see. I guess it made more sense in terms of you know my function activation because. Because it's like I had super activation on on S I and T E, um, and 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 I thought I thought at first that well I have savior consume because it's like I like to read books and I got shows that I like to watch and um, I like to eat good food and. And you know, kind of, kind of superficial reasons for for being savior consume. But then when I delve deeper, it's like, how much new information am I really taking in for myself? Because some some of the stuff that I thought was consume was, um, you know, already in my IJ box, and so it might have really been like like an extension of that or or more sleep. And and I think I could also see where where I was leaving leaving voids and voids and consume. Like sometimes, if it was something new and I was unfamiliar with it, and I wasn't sure how to approach it, I I'd, I'd often go to the tribe, and they would kind of kind of help me consume. So I was kind of doing consume through play, and then I and then I kind of realized that more as I processed my type. Hmm. That's interesting, yeah, because I mean, there's a lot of stereotypes about consume that are not really um, targeting actually, like actually what consume is. Um, like just in general, like there's like each animal, like there's aspects of that animal that literally everybody does. It's not it's right, not literally. Just and, and I think animal. because because almost everybody has like some you know, some shows that they like watching or, or music they like listening to or something they enjoy consuming. I mean. Mm -hmm. We all do. I mean, yeah. uh, like it, that, that's also I, what I think makes it difficult for some people to reconcile with their type um, because there's like everybody will do basic things. Everybody will. So it, it can be like, like, it's the, like it, it can end up being difficult to target what the question actually is to determine 
like your animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, or like sleep. Everybody's doing some internal processing. Yeah. You know, when you go to the typology groups, I mean, we're all kind of trying to process in our mind what we think our type is going, going to be. Now, I suppose those that are true savior sleep probably do do a lot more internal and they probably um, consult the tribe left. Whereas, you know, when I was learning about objective personality, I kind of went to the tribe almost right away. I and mean, then maybe that was kind of a hint there. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. Hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I did some thinking on my own, but, but, but it was kind of like, I kind of also needed the tribe to kind of, Help me fully integrate it. I see. That's very interesting. Like uh, you are lead blast, and you've ended up taking on a role of um, organizing all the information for the tribe. Um, and so that has really become like a. I mean, at least for me, like I recognize um, you for doing that, and um, yeah so like i wonder if that is kind of how you end up getting to the consume you end up managing things is that would you say that's accurate i think so hmm. do you want to expand on that like i'm wondering if you do that like on purpose like do you like go into those roles knowing that you will end up uh, being able to consume more of the information um for for me, it, it's more a matter of 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 wanting to be useful and helpful and 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 give something back, um, and and sometimes the consume part is secondary because sometimes I'll find that you know when I'm blasting that that I discover a hole you know in my knowledge that I gotta go patch up, or sometimes somebody else will ask me a question or. And it's something that maybe I hadn't considered, which prompts me to consume something. I see. Hmm. Because I, I was thinking about this recently. Like, I feel like uh, with consume, we end up taking on a role that allows us to um, um, absorb new information for the self versus the blast. It's like you end up taking on a role to um, absorb information for others. Yeah, um, so that's probably so like, more play than, you know, like, mm -hmm. like they're yeah, demanding this, that. I'm going to give it to them. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but I mean, like with uh, specifically consuming blasts, like um, with the blasts, like if somebody needs like something explained then you end up switching uh, for the TE to have the OI that's appropriate for that needs. Is that, would you say that's correct? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. So then it, it, what I'm saying there is like, um, if you're able to move yourself um, for the blast, then that allows you to pick an audience that would ask for something that you actually want to consume, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't really want to take on something that's, gonna demand that I consume something that I don't really want to consume. Hmm. I see. So you don't want to do it by yourself. Is, is that <laughs> well like 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 it depends on it depends on what it is. Um I, I mean I, I find that if it's brand new information unfamiliar information and I'm not sure where to get the best information, I, I'm probably going to go to the tribe for it. Hmm. And and my friend Brian, um, he's an ESTJ, he calls that consumed cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's like a... hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and he's demon consume as well, but 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 he's got a third. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Cheating. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just fascinated by it because it's just a totally different animal stack to me. So I'm like trying to like process as I'm interviewing you. 
Yeah, because oh, I think I think we're I think we're opposites now. Yeah, you know, because you got yeah, retyped yourself. You know, so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I'm consumed sleep play blast. So mm-hmm. your blast play sleep consume <laughs> yeah. totally opposite. Yep. Interesting. Okay, so let's um. Now we'll, let's just dive straight into the EU type. Um, okay. So this one is very interesting because you were actually retyped. Um, mm-hmm. you, you started out as social sexual, five wing six, um, two, uh, two wing three, and then nine wing one. So you actually had a, a three wing before, and you were actually core five wing six instead of six wing seven. Mm-hmm. And they had you social sexual. Yeah. Which is, how did that happen? Like, how do you think that ended up happening? Um. You, you mean, why did they change their mind, like, when they typed me? Why do you think they saw social sexual to begin with? I think it was my collage that, that I sent them. I And because they said that the collage I submitted was kind of, the pictures I picked were kind of airy, and and they weren't very grounded, and and and, and I didn't put a whole lot of thought into that original collage I made. I just kind of slapped it together. You know, it's like, okay, you want me to have a collage? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. You know, I didn't really want to, but, but I needed it for the typing. Um, and then I guess my typing video too was, was kind of short. It, you know, when I got retyped, I made a video that was twice as long and, it was a lot more detailed and it kind of really spilled out my, my soul on there and some of my deeper struggles. So, so I guess the, the, the two of those combined, because when I did retyping, I, I actually submitted five collages. <laughs> they said, oh, do wow. at least, two. they said, do a minimum of three. And I overachieved and I did five. And then I, <laughs> I, I made sure to have collages with pictures that I thought truly represented my personality but then I also would have collages where I would, would have images that I personally found aesthetically pleasing. So, so they're kind of getting both sides of that. Uh-huh. So I really wanted to give them a lot of information that they could work with. I see. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I remember going back and seeing your original collages, and I'm like, this is a lot of nature. Why did they put her self-pressed blinds? I was, like, well, I trying think it's to understand. in the original ones, it was kind of more images of, like, the sky and stuff, and whereas mm-hmm. I, in the newer collages, I still had some of that. I I mean, and, you know, but but I also had, like, one, I think one of my pictures had like a green leaf and it had like a little a shadow of a lizard on it. Um, so there, there were some more ground, grounded pics. And so, yeah, I hear but, you. but I don't think that collages alone are going to give you your type. I mean, I think that there might be some patterns, you know, in what people, what images people choose. But, yeah. I, but I think you got to look at, look at it in conjunction with, you know, with a video and, and, and other things and, and maybe their body language. So. Mm-hmm. No, no, I, I definitely get that. I just think that like, I mean, like anybody can make a collage with like insects or yeah. nature or whatever. However, right. if like they consistently keep on like gravitating towards nature and, and those things, I think that maybe that's probably because that's part of their typing. That's mm-hmm. just me, but um, I can see how, you know, maybe the the way you organized it or structured it, it was like... Well, I, I, well, well, like two of the collages I did, I kind of wanted to do a color scheme. So I did one that was a green one and one that was kind of purple. And, hmm. I, and it, was kind of, it was because I liked the aesthetic of it. Yeah. I'm like, well... Well, I like purple and I like green, and then I try to pick pictures I thought kind of aesthetically look good together in my mind. And yeah, 
No, I hear you. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, at least for me, that that was a difficulty that I had uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing collages. Like, I, mm -hmm. I, I would like for them to say, do these specific types of collages instead of just like totally free ball everything. Like, right, right. Yeah, I felt the same way. I'm like, oh, I narrow it down, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, what, like what do you want exactly? Like how many images? And because when I originally got typed, it was just one collage. And then when I got retyped, they said do at least three. So I, I think yeah. that maybe they've refined it over time. And mm -hmm. yeah. th maybe they found that they weren't as accurate when people just did one. And Yeah, yeah. And they've also said to put at least 10 images per collage. Um, yeah. So that's been, well, I think, I, yeah, yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, that's like a good thing, like to have a lot of images. in Because like if you have like five images, I mean... You can't really, and then, like I said, you know, those images could just be the state of mind that you're in right now, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, which is which is kind of why real. I also wanted to do. So two of my collages were were just images that represent my personality. They're they're not necessarily the ones I find the most aesthetically pleasing. Although some of those images I still found aesthetically pleasing, um, and that's why I did that so that they could kind of kind of get my personality yeah. more i hear you yeah um so let's see um so going from five wing six to six wing seven um that that is pretty drastic i mean it's still it a head center it's still like six is involved yeah um, however you know i i think that perhaps i'm, I'm just guessing here but you know, social sexual five wing six, it does sound like maybe they saw social sexual because of your seven wing, because seven is associated with social sexual, um, has like similar parallel vibes, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a type structure versus. Well, I know one thing that they said was they saw me like when they thought it was a five, that they thought it was more on the expressive end of a five, which is, I think, maybe why they why they gave me two second that that's another thing that I'm kind of kind of surprised is that two is my second fix and um you know maybe we can yeah. talk more about that in a little bit but um yeah because at first I'm like wow five did just disappeared entirely and but when I read the descriptions of like six wing five versus six wing seven I, I kind of actually now think six wing seven is a little closer than six wing five. And, and I think it could explain, um, you know, some of the things that I said in my typing video, like having this fear of missing out on things. And, and like, I talked about how I was, I was depressed because life is so short and I'm not going to be able to do everything in life that I want to do. And there's things I'll never get to experience. And and feeling uneasy by that, and and I think also my seven comes out because I I can have a bit of a silly switch once I'm comfortable with people, and I think six swing five might give off a bit more serious vibe, and whereas yeah. I'm a little bit more jovial. Um, hmm. That's my guess. Um, Okay, I, I could see that for sure. Um, but that could, could also be like the two in there as well. So, yeah, like originally I was like social five. I I wonder what that means because like you, the each typing it means something, you know. Like because they mean um, yeah, because because they're saying well they thought they were seeing the five, but but you're more expressive, and then they were talking, and that might have been why they. Well, that could have been too why they went with social sexual and 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 all that because when you think of fives, you kind of think of somebody who's pretty quiet. They're pretty withdrawn, um, and they're kind of obviously quiet, you know, to other people. And yeah, or and, and it's kind of and it's were... kind of like like according to my self reporting, I still see myself as an introvert, but 
I'm not sure that other people would see me that way. They probably see me as more extroverted than I would see myself. Yeah. So hmm. I think the other alternative is that they were drunk when they typed you. They were drunk. <laughs> well, you know, technically, I mean, sexual is the, the drunk instinct. So the I think it was instinct. a drunk typing since they got okay. to sexual. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. And I think maybe, and that's another reason, I guess, why I, I see myself as sexual last is because, um, you don't like, feel drunk. I don't want to take risks <laughs> that 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 could that could like endanger endanger me or or like make me sick and stuff. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I you know I fear getting drunk, for example, because I fear that loss of control, and I'm not quite sure what effects yeah. it would have on my body. But then now that I found out I have a seven wing, I I am open to trying new things. But what I try is pretty calculated, like kind of like taking calculated risks and, you know, yeah. trying to experiences that, that, you know, aren't physically dangerous. I would imagine because it yeah. has the frustration there. So it's like, it wants to hit the ideal, but it's like um, a little bit like weary of it, I guess. I yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. But I think, but I think compared to six wing five, I think six wing five would probably be a lot more cautious maybe. And I think six wing five, what I read about their description is like they do like all these contingency plans and stuff. And, and my planning isn't nearly as detailed. I, I mean, I do have some contingencies in mind, like, like the major cont contingencies kind of like you're going on a trip and you know, like, you know, plan for like one more day than you think you're going to be there just in case you get stranded. You know, there'll, there'll be a couple contingencies like that where I plan for, but I'm not going to plan for every little thing. I'm not going to plan for, oh, what if I get bit by a snake? Or, you know, especially, you know, if you're going somewhere where you're not going to, unless I was going to go hiking on a trail where there are a lot of snakes, it's not something I'm going to think of. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and like from I, I know a couple of people that are uh, self care social six wing seven. Uh, it's like a very specific brand of like planning and, um, but they yeah like it does seem like it's not completely rigid because I I feel like the six is open to um, the possibility that like something horrible that you can't predict will show up. Mm -hmm. It does seem like a little more um, like in the middle in that sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also your, your social secondary, which is um, the, the second instinct they call like the playground instinct. It's like the one that you enjoy doing. It doesn't make you nervous. Um, and you can probably do it a little better than the first one sometimes than some people. Some people are better at the first, but some people are better at the second. Yeah, and that's another thing, too, there. is I have been going back and forth so much between, like, um, self-pressed social and social self press. I, I mean, I guess in favor of self-pressed social is seeing myself as more sin flow than contra flow. Mm -hmm. But I know that some theories of instincts will say like like your first instinct is the one that really kind of stresses you out and makes you anxious and the second instinct is kind of more balanced and if you go by that I, I think I would be social first because um, I do have a lot of anxieties surrounding social stuff like you know I'm curious about that where so. self press I kind of feel more I kind of feel balanced on the self, the self pres kind of like, like I'm not overdoing it. And I kind of know the, the sufficient amount kind of like, kind of like, like with my eating habits, for example, like I eat mostly healthy and I exercise most every day, but I'm also not a fanatic about it. And I will allow myself 
you know, to feed on my diet, you know, every now and then, but I'm also not totally careless about my health either. I'm not at that extreme. It's kind of that happy medium I've been, I managed to find for myself. Hmm. I see. Um, so how do you see the social six then? Because um, social six, to my understanding, it's like they, um, they just predict a lot on like how social situations are going to go. Um, just constantly assessing the, all the like social factors and thinking ahead of time for those things. Um, I do. do well, I, I kind of do that. I mean, I, I guess I would have to have another social six to compare to, um, to, to see how much of that I'm, I'm really doing. But, but it, in my mind, you know, like I'm, I'm going into the situation and I'm like, what is their personality like? What is their vibe like? Um, what do these people, what do these people want? You know, what, what can I do and say to best win their favor? Um, I mean, there's a lot of thinking like that, or even just in general, what do they think of me? I, you know, or I make, I unintentionally make some, some faux pas, like, like, what are they going to think of me? You know, I mean, there's kind of, there's a lot of anxiety surrounding what do other people think of me? Mm. Well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, six is uh, an attachment type. Um, and they tend to like throw the ball in terms of like, um, like they're, they're just grabbing like what, what are other people already thinking? Like what are thought structures that already exist and working with those things? Um, so I'm thinking that's probably part of it, mm -hmm. like part of six itself. Mm. But then on um, the self present, you know, I do think a lot about like my own mortality and um like my like my health and and you know worried about getting old and, and losing my health and losing my vitality um you know even though I have plenty of money you know sometimes I have this weird fear like like what if I got fired from my job or or all of a sudden I had some severe medical condition and I lost a lot of my money. And I, so I have those concerns too. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I feel like that ties a little into your social type three in OPS. You still identify with uh, oh. social type three, right? Um, yes. For the most part, the only thing that, that, ke that keeps me doubting sometimes is that threes or flex second, and mm -hmm. and I think because of my OP type and also my tri type in, in the enneagram, it's not going to seem obvious that I'm your flex because I think on the exterior, you know, you know, oh you're you're so nice, everybody likes you, and and I think that can cause people to to think that I'm a four on the surface. Mm -hmm. Well, what's interesting is they they say that the threes and the fours are And I'm not going nice. out there bragging about my yeah, achievements the... either. I'm kind of more the type, I just quietly work hard and, and hope that people notice. But of course, in, in my mind, yeah, you know, I, I want to do good and I, and I want others to, to see me as competent. And like, I don't have mm -hmm. to be the very best but I definitely want to be above average and, and stand out in some way. But I also feel like I can't be overt about it either. You, you know, it's kind of more subtle. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, I guess there's like a little overlap there between the self press six and the social type three a little bit um, because of the security focus and, well, the security, yeah, the security is a, the security is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, because I related that part where Dave and Chan said, "Well, the Type Three, they just want to do their job and and get their four hundred one k." And I'm like, "Yep, that's me." <laughs> I see. But I think I think one difference too is that, like, like trees are re supposedly responsibility last, and and I feel like like oftentimes I am the one volunteering 
to take on the extra responsibilities. But it could kind of be for a, a, a type three reason. Um, because, because, because like, like I'm thinking, well, if I take on these responsibilities, you know, this will look good on my resume. And then I, I can, I can get a better position that will later allow for more security and specialization. So mm. I actually kind of had to do that um, it, in, in my field, you know, um, I'm a librarian and, and I was doing on call work and that's all I was doing for, for a long time. And now I finally got a permanent position but it's still part time, so I'm still doing on call on, on the side. But but just to get that position, it was so it was so competitive. So I felt like I had to do all these different things and and learn all these skills because there wasn't that many jobs out there. So I couldn't be too too choosy. The more skills that I have, the better position I'm in. So I would do that. I would sort of do the so-called responsibility thing, but it was kind of so I could get this position that would allow me to specialize more. And then, and then once I got that position and got secure in it, I could drop some of these other things. Hmm. Um, that That's interesting because that does sound like responsibility. So I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it's like, and I mean, like I said, we, you know, some people type themselves upside down. I mean, like, like type two is not completely off the table. I mean, mm -hmm. how about four? Four is not completely off the table either. Um, except that I didn't, when I watched their video about fours, David, I, you know, I didn't relate to most of it. It was sort of like fours were kind of more like not so worried about their status. And, and they were kind of like, like in terms of, in terms of work, you know, their, their attitude was a lot more carefree than, than mine was like, like it wasn't as, it wasn't as serious for them. And then they were just kind of, kind of drifting from job to job because they wanted to go where the friends were. And, and for me, it's like, I kind of want a job where I can just stay in and it, I can just stay in and get good at. And I think we also talked about the fours kind of having more of a sense of fate. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, I don't want to just be fatalistic. I want to feel like I have control over things. I guess what I did relate to with the four was like, like they are the people that are, that will um, really support, support their friends. And if, and if their friend was really in need of something, they go out of their way to provide it for them. I mean, that part I related to. Mm, interesting. Like, well, 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 like, kind of like if they saw some homeless person on the street and they needed money, they give them some money, you know, stuff like that. I wonder if, uh, like, not relating to how fours rely on fate, maybe that's the end of last, like, conflicting or, I don't know, just a guess here. Well, what's conflicting? Like, having NF last is already similar to, um, like, not trusting fate. So then force trusting fate would be the opposite of that. So maybe if they, if you had both at the same time, it would be hard to see the full anecdote of that for four. I don't know. Just yes, possibly. Uh... Hmm. But then I know fours that are, that are NF last or, or have demon NF. So. Hmm. And they're still like that. The ones I know are. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Interesting. All right. So next we have your two fix. It is two wing one double hex add 
Um, and yeah, like you were not surprised by two initially before, right? Well, at first I thought, I thought maybe I had a three fix, um, or, or a four fix. I, 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 you know, I actually didn't think I, it was as likely for me to have, have a two fix. And I think it's just because of all these anecdotes that surround Enneagram twos kind of like all they're doing all day is helping other people and serving others. They never do anything for themselves. They're not aware of their own needs. And, and I, and I did not relate to that at all. Whereas I related to type three, like, you know, being concerned about their image and, and wanting to be successful. And then I, I related to fours it, just to, just in the sense of like, you know, wanting to be authentic and true to themselves and, and explore their deep emotions and feelings. Hmm. I feel like the four, like type four is very easy for people to see in themselves. Um, like in general, a lot of people, they feel like they relate to four, like literally mm -hmm. fucking everybody. But now, but now, like I, 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 well, 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 now that I understand four more, I, I can see, no, I'm, I'm not a four. <laughs> no way in yeah. hell. But, but, <laughs> you know, well, like, like sometimes like fours will, it's almost like some, some of them will embrace their melancholy. Whereas mm -hmm. for me, it, it's like, well, I'll have moments where I feel melancholy, but I don't embrace it. You know, I want to get out of it. <laughs> I don't want to be. Yeah. Here. And, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the thing about being unique too, it, it's kind of like sometimes fours just want to be unique for the sake of being unique. Whereas for me, it's, it's not so much, it's not so much that way. And, it, and it's like, I mean, I, I want to stand out, but I think it's kind of maybe more in a social three specialization kind of way. Um, I don't want to be like, you know, unique for something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to be so unique that I'm alienated from everyone, everyone else. Yeah. But, but when some fours will take pride in that, oh, like, I'm the only one that's like this or something. And I don't want, you know, that's that's this alienating, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to find like-minded people. Yeah, for, from what I understand of four, um, like, it's, it's kind of like their emotional brain is constantly looking at the, um, the, the dark side emotionally. And so they always feel like other people don't relate to their specific darkness because they're not even like in touch with um, anybody else in general. So, <clears throat> so that has to be true. If you know what I mean, like, like if you're disconnected from others because you're stuck in your pain, then of course you're gonna feel like nobody relates to you. Is what I'm trying to say. So mm -hmm. they, they're like mm -hmm. constantly speaking from that lens. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas with the two, it's um, they're always looking at the sunny side emotionally. And so they can kind of reject the negative side sometimes. Well, that's another thing is that I, I don't feel like I'm as positive outlook as my type makes it out to be. I mean, because, because I'm, I, I feel anxious, you know, I feel anxious about what, what could go wrong or, or I see things that could be better or different. And then also I'm, I, I'm also focused a lot on, on competency. Um, mm -hmm. So that was kind of a surprise that, you know, that I went from having competency lead and now my tri type doesn't contain competency types in it. And yet I, so and maybe that's just being social type three, you know, being focused on that. Um, I also think um, your double one wing is double yeah. competency technically. Oh, oh, that's right, right, yeah. So, so I still have the competency. You're right. I still have the competency from from there. Yeah, the, those tend to be really loud. Like if somebody has two of the same wing, they tend to be pretty loud. Well, well, that yeah, and that's another. 
interesting is it, it's sort of like my gut picks. I kept going back and forth between one and nine. I'm like, well, I'm either like a one with a strong nine wing or a nine with a strong one wing. <laughs> Which one? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I mean, I, I've even had a few people um, this type me as a one. The core one. They actually thought it was a core one because. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, Not surprised. I mean, it, it, like I said, uh, when you have double wing at ten, it almost almost like a fourth fix. Honestly, it can feel like a fourth fix. So it can be mistaken as one of the fixes in general. Um, so. Hmm. So. With the the two fix, it's a rejection type, which means that you will say no, and you you will like reject things in place of favoring your own offering. So with two, it's like it's in the heart space and it's positive, so they have like a positive offering um, that tends to represent their version of love. Like this is what love is for me. As like they're giving it to somebody, and it's like if you don't want this, then that's offensive because you have to take it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you relate to that? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of do. It's kind of like, oh, um, I mean, I, I do. It, it's complicated. I, I do relate to it, and and yet I, I, I don't relate it, relate to it. I mean, because sometimes I, you know, I read about these twos, and again, they make them sound like they're super givers. They're always giving to other people. They're never taking anything for themselves, and and that and that part uh, part I don't relate to. Um, but 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 also I think that there's some anxiety that I have surrounding giving because especially if I don't know how it's going to be received by others. It's kind of like I'll be anxious about giving gifts because of course I want people to like and appreciate the gift I'm giving them. And if I can't do that well, why do it? (laughs) Um, Or if I'm putting all this effort into, you know, teaching a class, for example, and then, and then I find out that they're that they're not interested, or they're telling me I'm bad. You, you know, you know that that's going to hurt. So, so I think that that part of that stuff about giving, you know, I relate to. I want it to definitely want it to be received well by others. Mm-hmm. But then, on the other hand, I'm not going around constantly giving either I, I i don't know i feel more detached in, in in some ways and and sometimes twos will get will just insist that you take it and, and they're kind of shovy on it and and i don't feel like i'm like i'm that shovy like like here you you take this i i i made these brownies you eat it and, and I'm not really like that. <laughs> you, you, you know, I mean, yeah, if I spent all this hard work making a batch of brownies and I give it to my coworkers and not many people are taking the brownies, yeah, I'm going to feel a little disappointed, but I'm not going to shove it on them, you, you know, so because yeah. I don't like things shoved on me. So, I mean, I'm sure it wouldn't come <laughs> off like, um, them, but yeah, I so. uh, because I think because of the, the nine fix, it would not come off as um, physically forceful. Um, but mm-hmm. you do have the, the one wing. So I think that it can be more um, uh, rigid about what the offering is, because if it's two wing three, then it connects to the collective to kind of adjust the offering to match the group a little bit, just a mm-hmm. little bit. But with the one wing, it's like, no, this is actually perfect. Like, not only is this what I'm going to give you, but this is perfect. Like, I've refined it. Do you relate at all to that? Like, when you finally, like, give See, somebody... I, don't know. No, I mean, I like kind this. of relate to both the one and the three, as you described it. I mean... Hmm. How so? Well, I mean, I mean, like, like you said, like, like, 
like like trying to trying to adapt to the group. You know, I definitely see myself doing that. But then there's also that aspect of, of perfection, kind of like I really put a lot of thought into this. In my mind, it's perfect. You know, don't try to tell yeah. me it's not perfect. <laughs> you, you know, don't mm. don't <laughs> point out the flaws. You know, so yeah. Mm. But then if it's not if it's not perfect and people want something different, then I'll go ahead and adapt it so that they are pleased. Hmm. I wonder if that's because you have the six and the nine fix. So Could it's be. like not difficult to tap into that regardless. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, it's also a uh, double super ego. Two wing one is double super ego. Uh, super ego is like that force that tells you you're supposed to behave a certain way. Uh, so two wing one can tend to like, it, it's, it's an image type, but it's like a very like super ego image type. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of shoulds and oughts in my life, but, you know, I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's very. Hmm. Like, do, do you feel like you are trying to portray an image that you follow um, roles in any way? Did you say rules or roles? <laughs> rules, like rules. Like you follow yeah. rules, like uh, you are what you're supposed to be, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Because like, like, I'm, like I'm super sensitive to to criticism and I, I don't want people to correct me. So, you know, that, that double one, double one wings. Um, hmm. But I think maybe where I'm, where I'm different from, from some of the other ones is that my perfection is very much others directed. It, it's kind of like, um, I will follow the rules so no one criticizes me or, or kind of like I won't give other people a reason to criticize me. Whereas some ones they're, they're almost more self perfectionistic. Like they'll follow the rules to the letter, even when no one is watching them. Mm. Whereas I will be more like, okay, nobody's, nobody's watching. I can let things slide a little bit. Mm. <laughs> kind of like, um, you're like you're at an intersection and it's three o'clock in the morning and the light is red. You're supposed to be stopped, but there are no cars in sight, no police. Whereas, you know, at that point, it's like this rule is silly. I'm just going to go. Whereas the one might, might say, well, that's the rule. I'm st sticking to it, even though no one's watching. I mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, I get you. So, like, you you do bend the rules a bit, but you do follow them otherwise. When people are watching. Yeah, when people are watching me. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to look bad to them. I don't like being corrected and having my flaws point, pointed out. It's embarrassing, mm -hmm. so. I see. Okay. Mm. And sometimes, too, it, it, it's to keep the harmony. It's like, because I don't want to cause conflict and, I, and I, I just want people to get along you know they're, they're... Mm. okay so let's see you then you have your nine wing one is your last fix um yeah and that's another thing i had a question on is that when i'm reading about like like the type i feel like i relate more to nine than i do to mm. two so, so i'm still trying to process why they put two ahead of nine and I mean, even in my original typing, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe because they see more heart influence than gut influence. Um, could be. Um, that that is a tricky one because they both have a one wing, so it, it may blur um, the difference a little bit. Um, hmm. Okay, so with nine, they tend to numb out and dissociate from conflict. 
uh, dissociate from like disturbances and stuff like that. Um, do you feel like you do that in order to preserve harmony? Like, do you like just kind of ignore like, you know, um, shaking in the room or people that are causing shock waves and stuff like that? Well, I mean, I want to ignore it. I mean, I can't. I mean, I, I can't just ignore it. But I don't know if "ignore" is the right word. But 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 trying to try to avoid them if you can. I mean, I mean, I mean that'll that'll do. Like, like sometimes, you know, there'll be certain social gatherings that I might avoid if I know a, a certain person's going to be there that I know might upset me in some way. They might they might do or say things that I find upsetting, or or like there's certain posts on Facebook or some other group that I that I may not may not read or may not may be wary about reading somebody's posts because they they cause that discord, you know, in my mind and or they say hurtful things. Hmm. Okay. But um, then on the other hand, like w one thing about nines that I that I don't relate to is is sometimes like nines will just kind of brush problems aside and act like they don't exist, and and mm -hmm. I don't do that. I, I can't do that. It's like if I have a problem, I feel like I have to solve it right then and there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're six core, so well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, six. so. Yeah, so that's that's and, already and, automatically. And sometimes that may end up causing co causing conflict, but then it's to avoid conflict in the long run. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. And nine is a body type, which means that it's like it's focused on like your the way you execute a plan physically. Um, so, do you, do you feel like you tend to reference um, how things influence your your body or how things influence your plan or how they influence your like physical grounded example of what you own? Oh, I guess it's hard to answer that. Um, I mean, I, I am quite aware of how I, how I physically feel in my body. Like, like, like sometimes like I won't, want to feel certain emotions because I don't like the body sensations that they make me feel like, like anxiety makes me physically feel tense. And then the physical sensation is uncomfortable. Hmm. Now, I don't know if maybe some of that ties into being self pres I could maybe see some overlap between self pres and gut in some way, you know, being body focused. Yeah, no, definitely. So I think maybe having like, like self pres dom can make it feel like body is higher up, but it could um, be. Well, cause I know some people in the community, they, they thought that, that I had my heart fixed last mm -hmm. because it was kind of like when I read about the types, it's like, well, you know, according to my own self-reporting, I thought, oh, I relate to one in nine more than I do any of the heart types. And it was kind of hard to even find my heart fix because it's like when I read the descriptions, I didn't strongly relate to any of them. So, mm -hmm. so I guess I'm wondering, you know, why for all this time, like it wasn't seeing the two, um, you know, because of the, the the bad description out there, you know, due to, to being like some other, due to other typologies conflicting with that. Like we talk about how twos, um, it, it, you know, you know, it, it seems like like type twos would have high FE, like in Myers Briggs, and so if you don't have high FE. Um, you know, what is it? 
Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what was I going to say? No, at least for me, like, I, I associate type 9 as being a fantasy type. And when I hear your language, I don't really get fantasy from you <laughs> that much. Um, so that's, for me, it's like, okay, well, if they have her 9 last, then maybe it's because there's not a lot of fantasy language here. Um, well, like I, well, defining what you're saying. And well, I, I am an I am an ST in in OPF, so there's that. And then also, I think for me, the fantasy is kind of more internalized, you know, because in my mind, you know, I'm being idealistic, and I'm dreaming of a better world and a utopian society, which is, mm -hmm. but I'm maybe not coming out and expressing that. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I guess, you I guess also... for me, because 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 maybe for me, it, it seems like well, it's obvious who who doesn't want a utopian society, you know? I mean, right, right. <laughs> but then there's some people that don't, you know. They like all the conflict. They like all the conflict and strife, you know. And and for me, you know, it's like I'm trying to, you know, strip away all that and get closer and closer to the ideal and. But yeah, not everybody's like well, that, that me, makes so. Sense. so. So this next thing is actually going to tie into that. I think uh, your overlay is uh, one one seven, so uh, it's a bald one and then a regular seven, which is technically triple frustration. Technically, um, mm -hmm. you're just missing the um, the four, but um, your triple frustration overlay. Um, mm -hmm. And what's interesting about that is frustration types, they're chasing an ideal. They're trying to reach something that is like they're the best standard, but it, they never quite get there. It, it always feels like they're frustrated. That's why it's called frustration. Um, <clears throat> so like you just explained like you, okay, she just disappeared. Okay, now she's back, okay. Oh, I'm right. back. I had a little little blip in my connection. Okay, perfect. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, so I was just saying that, um, yeah, so since you have triple frustration overlay, um, I think that that can probably feel like um, like a fancy aspect um, where, like, you're trying to chase, like, a, an idealized utopian society thing you were just explaining to you. Do you mm -hmm. see any of like? Do you see how that might make sense? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I do because because I just think a lot about what like like our society and like how there's you know there's still like like there's a lot of inequality in this world where where it doesn't have to be, and in the United States like like. You know, like our healthcare system, you know, needs need, needs work because people, some people aren't getting the health care, the health care that they need, and then there's like discrimination against certain groups. So, so I'm just thinking about all these ways in which society could be improved. Hmm. Interesting, and it's all you're also like focusing on the self press side of it, which is. <laughs> interesting to me because yeah, like, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like kind of like, like I, I want everybody to be able to have have as comfortable of a living as possible and it shouldn't be based on your income you, you know like everybody has yeah. the right everybody has the right to health care you know because i don't believe that human life has a monetary value on it you know mm -hmm. yeah so that that was interesting to me because uh, self press social social self press are pretty yeah. similar. It's just that the self press social is more focused on the self press aspect of society, whereas social self press is using self press to achieve like a more um, a, like ideal social sphere. Um, mm -hmm. So, but they're super fucking similar. So I, I do. I'm wondering see, how like. Like those with sexual would experience society. I mean, it. I mean, from what I understand, it's it, it's quite it's more self focused. So they may not think of society as much. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like their like their personal. 
culture or their personal experience uh, more so than the the shared like atmosphere and stuff like that um so let's see so then you also have a triple positive adjacent because you have a seven wing on your six yeah so that and that's just another thing that to nine. Uh, I guess that's another thing that I'm trying to process is because, um, that, because I feel like, you know, I feel like maybe, maybe, maybe because it, it's also frustration, you know, so it's like, how do you, you know, integrate those two? I mean, because, because seven is a frustration type, even though it's a positive type, it's. Yeah. How do you mean that? Well, like, I, 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 I guess for me, it, it, it's sort of like I would see this positive outlook type is thinking that, like, these people always think, oh, everything is just, just going to work out. Don't worry about things. You know, everything will be okay. And that's something I would like for myself, but I often don't feel that, you know, because if you, you know, because problems aren't going to solve themselves, you, you, you got to work hard to solve, to, to solve problems, problems and, and get things back in order and not everything is, is rosy. So, so in that, in that way, I don't relate to positive outlook, but then but then I, I guess where I guess where I could see positive outlook is that, you know, you know, other people see me as most people see me as being pretty positive and upbeat, up, you know, upbeat. And, and I guess I'm idealistic and, and, you know, in, and I guess even if things are going wrong, you know, I'd like to be able to find some kind of bright side to it. Does that I make sense? Mean. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so you're saying that you tend to come back to seeing a positive outlook. That's literally called positive outlook because it's like they're trying to make a like an optimistic um, perspective out of whatever that's there. Maybe. Um, and, and I think one thing I don't like is when people are too negative or too critical and they fail to see any positivity at all. Like, mm. Which is interesting because you're core six, which is core negative. So how do you feel about that contradiction? Well, I think it's more like, I feel that way more like, like when, when somebody has good intentions and they really put a good effort on something and, Maybe it didn't turn out the way people hoped, but but their intentions were were good. And then just to just to criticize them for that, like like maybe let, 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 let's say that they were putting on um, some production, for example, and maybe there ended up being a lot of things that weren't right about it, okay? Um, <clears throat> but they worked hard and they spent long hours on it. And and then to, so to, so to just completely trash it, it just feels kind of mean. Yeah. Um, hmm. I see what you mean. Like, so you don't want somebody to be negative for the sake of, um, poisoning the the water, right? Yeah, right. And, and then there's some people that that just like they're contradictory. I think just for for being the sake of contradictory, like they're just almost like 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 they're just negative, you know. Just, just A devil's kind of, advocate. Well, not necessarily. It's just more for shock value than than, than anything. Almost like 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 trolling, kind of like. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Well, is there a time where you see there's a purpose to the negativity? Because sometimes I, I can be the devil's advocate, and sometimes I will take, um, you know, unpopular stances or something. But but it's usually you know something that that's that's well thought out, and I and I try to at least validate where the other side is coming from, especially when I know most people, you know, aren't going to agree with me, and I try to state it in a way you know, where I'm not going to offend people, you know, because some people, they're not very careful with their words and they just say whatever's on their mind and they don't care about how it impacts other people. And I, I really try to be careful. And, you know, and if I unintentionally hurt somebody, you know, I'm, I'm quick to apologize, you know, and I'm quick to try to reconcile and, and make things right. And, and, you know, and I, and, you know, on the Myers-Briggs side of things, I actually kind of, thought, well, maybe I could be a feeling type and not a thinking type because I'm doing so much of that. Like, why am I not mm -hmm. F.E.? But mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe save your, maybe because I'm feminine T.E., maybe it's got its own brand of it, I suppose. It's also just a misconception, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think I see I can what also... you're saying, though. Like, you, you do do the negative thing, but it's more um, purposeful. Like, right. You, you really yeah, yeah. Need a strong sometimes purpose for there be people that, that 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 just say, "Oh, this is just just garbage. This has no value at all. It's bad, and it's always going to be bad. And there's no way to fix it." Whereas I'm more like, "It may not be ideal now, but let's work to make it more ideal." Mm. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, that 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 clicks with your overlay with like trying to reach the ideal. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So that pretty much concludes your whole typing. Is there anything else that you There's want to add about it? I wanted, wanted to say like, like, like they, they talk about people having a, like a two, six, nine tri type as, mm -hmm. as Stockholm syndrome. And that's kind of their nickname for it. Yes. But I don't relate. I read about Stockholm syndrome, and I don't relate at all to that. Um, oh, really? No. Well, because they define Stockholm syndrome kind of like, well, like, like, kind of like you're just being being willing to take abuse and stuff. And and I don't tolerate abuse. Um, mm -hmm. Which fits with six, but. I wonder if, like, because apparently Stockholm's, they will, like, give second chances, third chances sometimes. Well, I will give second chances. I mean, um, but, you, you know, like, if somebody, if somebody is genuinely sorry and, 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 they, and they want to improve, I will. But I'm not also one of those persons that will give an infinite number of chances if, if it's an underlying pattern. I actually think... Like, in that regard, if I know that somebody's abused me and they continue to abuse me, I, th I, I think I could easily cut them off. Mm. Hmm. Would it have to be like an, an extreme circumstance, do you think? To, to, to cut them off? Yeah, yeah, to cut them off. Yeah, yeah, well, pretty extreme. Like, like they've... Um, like they physically injured me, um, you know, they, they stole a bunch of my possessions. I mean, I mean, it would have to be, yeah, I mean, it would have to be like on, yeah, I mean, it would have to be like probably repeated offenses or, or something that was just absolutely terrible. Like, like if they try to murder me, you know, yeah, I'm cutting them off. Okay. In that case, I they're probably hope. not going to get a second chance. <laughs> They stole a million dollars from me, you know, just because they wanted a million dollars, you know. Now, if they stole a million dollars because, let, let, let's say, like, they needed some kind of medical treatment to survive and that was the only way they could get the money, yeah, I, I could probably forgive them. <laughs> I mean, maybe it worked something out. I mean, those are out. pretty extreme, though. But those are pretty those extreme, are, yeah. extreme cases, yeah. <laughs> I mean... I'm wondering, like, how about something like um, if somebody cuts you off on the road, uh, would you 
be upset with that person? Would you feel tense with that person? Or would you just be like, oh, whatever, they just needed to, to get through? I'm kind of both. Kind of both. It. I, I mean, like, 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 yeah, I feel kind of upset in the moment. Like, why do they, why do they do that? You know, but, but then on the other hand, it, it, it's kind of like a few minutes, a couple minutes later, I, I've forgotten about it. You know, I'm, I'm onto something else. It, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're kind of, kind of jerks. Maybe they were in a, maybe they were in a rush, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not something I'm going to lose sleep over. But if somebody made a really rude comment directed at me, you know, mm. that would that I would find upsetting. I would, you know, that I would probably, you know, not go over so well. <laughs> I I'd pro I mean, I might, mm. might say, "What are you saying that for?" You know, and uh, interesting. And I guess maybe that I mean that makes sense to me. The fact that like a rude comment specifically would upset you because you're core six, so you're reactive. So yeah. you will like kind of say something, but you have the triple positive adjacent, so you're kind of against the negativity of it. So. Well, I think it's kind of. I think it's kind of like. Well, sometimes I'll run into situations where it, it, it's like, I think that they're. You know, are they being rude or am I just taking it wrong? Because sometimes I don't always know because. Because the six is very sensitive to like, to that kind of thing, you know, like is somebody perceiving me negatively and, and why and, and there, but then on the other hand, it's, it's, it's like, am I, am I just overreacting here? Did they even intend for it to be that way? Am I just interpreting this completely wrong? So sometimes I feel like I have to have the proof, you know, mm. that, that, yeah. that their intent was, was bad or, or the, or before I call them out on it. So sometimes I ask myself, well, how would a normal person, you know, react, you know, is this just me or, or yeah, is this something that, that would, that would, you know, bother most people. And then I, I kind of use that as a guide, but, but even that isn't perfect. Yeah. It's still coming from my own perception. That's definitely the six because they say the six, like six <laughs> in general has to prove things. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's attachment and head type, so you have to like mentally prove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So, I any anything else? We've covered basically every single possible. I think we've <laughs> covered all the parts of the type. So. Yeah. All right. Um, any audience members, if you have comments, send them right now. Um. All right. Well, thanks so much for having me on. All right. So we don't have any comments, so I guess. Great discussion. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming here. Um, it was really good time. Uh, so thank you. Okay. Bye.